Closing a deal via voicemail is very counterintuitive. Um, voicemail is actually still used by executives. Uh, chief technology officers uh, manage their day and buffer and filter who they talk to by voicemail. And so voicemail also dovetails with uh, ageism, where on the telephone, nobody can tell that you're a sophomore or junior uh, at Stanford University in CS because on a telephone people assume that you're naturally older. If you're leaving great voicemails they're gonna think that you're a 35 year old technology executive uh, that has been working voicemail since they graduated college. So let me rifle off a handful of voicemail tips, techniques, strategies, and ideas to do better and help you hack sales using voicemail. Number one goal is you want to try to put, get them to put pen to paper. Once you get a person to put pen to paper, that's a huge step towards closing a deal via voicemail. Number two, you want to avoid 337, which is fast forward, fast forward, delete. Fast forward, fast forward, delete. That's 337 because old executives, all they do is sit on voicemail where they want to try to clear their voicemail. In the same way that you as a young kid want a clear email address, old people want to have their voicemail box be empty. And they just let their email declare bankruptcy. You want to use your body, number three, you want to use your body language to talk into the voicemail box. So the voicemail box connotates tonality and physiology, which is what? Physiology is 55% uh, of communication, tonality is 38%, right? And words are only 7%. So you want to use, that's not me, that's Richard J Grinder Miller, Neuro Linguistic Programming, eh, it doesn't matter. So the majority of communication is physiology and tonality. So you want to emote your body in. Number four, you want to get a mirror because the face that you have on the telephone is also the mirror that gives you feedback. So when you're talking to somebody non-FaceTime, you can actually see yourself in a mirror. And having FaceTime helps, but you're not FaceTiming executives. You wanna pause and restart the area code and prefix when delivering your own phone number. So this is number five, giving your own phone number. The way that young people give their phone number is in a club where they just hand you a phone and they're like, yeah, go ahead and just call my, call yourself and now I have your number. That's not how closing a deal via voicemail works. It's literally saying your own telephone number three, four, or five times. This makes me giggle because I get callbacks just by my ability to leave my own telephone number in a voicemail message. 650, grab a pen, 650, uh, seriously, grab a pen. 650-283-8008. So the cadence is you want to try to pause between your area code and the prefix of your number. 650, you get the picture. 8008, that's how it ends. So number six, you want to set aside, in, especially in voicemail, you want to set aside your need to sell something. You can't sell something right now. Add in mentorship because you're not just going to be leaving one voicemail message, you're going to be leaving a sequence of voicemail messages. That sounds counterintuitive because it sounds like you're a stalker, but that's how sales works. And if you're an undergrad engineer and nobody's ever heard of you, that's what you're going to need to do is sequentially try to mentor people using the very specific vertical that you are focused on from your engineering 145, from your CS 183S, whatever. Number seven to reiterate is actually, I'm reading from Google's GigaOM, how to close a deal via voicemail. Number seven, mentor your prospect. As a CS major, you've got a golden opportunity because nobody really understands what you do and nobody really understands all the new stuff that's spinning out of whatever you're doing. And when you're adding innovation on top of it, people don't get it and they're embarrassed to tell you and executives are intimidated. Uh, so you've got to mentor them and slowly mentor them. And then when they say stuff like, oh, I'm kind of intimidated, 
Now you're bonding with them in the cadence and the tempo of a relationship over the telephone. Don't add them on Facebook. Then they're not going to be Facebook friends. And for goodness sakes, don't add them on LinkedIn. In a voicemail, you want to get in late and get out early. You want to preamble, pre-roll the, oh, I'm Larry Chang, I'm from Duck9, we help college students with their FICO score. You want to get in much later than that. Hi, this is Larry Chang. Uh, of course, we do FICO score credit underwriting and help institutions save money on charge-offs. You want to get in late and get out early, where you don't want to set a specific, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them. That's the old technique. Tell them what you're going to tell them. This is old. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them. Tell them what you told them. That's beating them over the head. You want to get in late and get out early. A great example of this is, hey, Mr. Executive, I didn't know if you're going to be going to a future conference, this future conference in your industry. Executives are always going to boondoggles. So they get spam about it, and they're thinking about going, and if it works in their schedule, they're going to go. Oh, if you're going to go to the boondoggle in Laguna or Half Moon Bay or Phoenix, Arizona in the dead of winter, we're going to be there talking about three things. One, uh, debit reporting analysis, something very specific to your industry. And we're going to be talking about uh, credit underwriting and as it pertains to uh, risk mitigation. And the third thing, well, you know what, I'll tell you the third thing that we're going to be speaking of when you call me back. Here's my number. Grab a pen. So you're mentoring and you're setting aside your need to sell something and you're trying to get out late and get out early. So that wraps up point number eight. Point number nine is you want to call the admin network also. Initially, you're not going to be able to get in front of executives because you're only going to be talking to their lieutenants or their gatekeepers. Work the gatekeeper as if they're the executive because I'm guessing, and this is horrible and counterintuitive, horrible to say, but it's deliciously real. The gatekeeper is the one who's telling the executive what's important and what isn't. And guess what? The lieutenants, they do all the work of the executives. Executives don't really make decisions. They just listen to their lieutenants. So if you're able to mentor one of their assistants or an intern that's in charge of credit risk mitigation as far as it pertains to off credit report scoring, whatever random thing that you're working on. I'm using my stuff. That's the methodology to try to influence the person at the very, very top. I hope that helps you close a deal via voicemail. This works for uh, closing an internship via voicemail too. Uh, I wish you lots of luck.